Hi, I'm Autumn. My dog Chloe and I are nomads. We travel, build stuff, and talk all about nomadic living. Sometimes we're deep and poetic, other times we're silly. Sometimes we share practical and pragmatic tips, and we always share the incredible blessing of Mother Nature's beauty. Last week, we continued to marvel at the beauty of Idaho, and we shared 18 strange things that we learned about living in a car full-time for 14 months. This week, we share about how this lifestyle, although awesome in many ways, is complicated. Be sure to subscribe. When I decided to try the nomadic life, I began the experience with the intention to be curious. I wondered if I would really like life as a nomad, or if the dream of the experience was more compelling than the reality. Whether or not I liked it, I wanted to know why I felt as I did. Prettiest drive ever! Hi! Well, look who joined us! She probably wants to go outside. She always wants to go outside. After doing this for 14 months, I will say it's harder than I thought it would be. But I wanted to travel more and in a way where I was really able to get to experience a location where I could basically live in different places for as long or as short as I would like. Living nomadically in a car has absolutely allowed for this to happen. It's the first day of summer. And it is so cold and so windy that my eye was just watering. Chloe's been sleeping all day. Also, I wanted to live in nature. Living nomadically has absolutely allowed for this to happen. I spend most of my time living in national forest and BLM lands. First day of summer. Heavy jacket. Ear warmers. And it snowed yesterday and today. Oh, Chloe, up, up, up. I took this footage at 10 o'clock at night. I've never seen the dusk last into the night like this. This was yet another free wild campsite. I'm often asked where I find so many incredible free campsites. I use freecampsite.net. I've tried all the apps, but found this particular website to be the most useful. I also became a car dwelling nomad so that life could slow down. I've always felt that life was filled with unnecessary complications and I wanted to live calmly and gently. Living nomadically in a car, well, it hasn't necessarily helped me reach the goal of simplicity. I woke up in Moscow, Idaho. I stealth camped. Then I went to a gas station, filled my thermoses up with hot water because sometimes when I stealth camp, I can't get my tea all set the night before, which is really my preference. But anyway, that's what I did. And then I drove up to Coeur d'Alene. I went to Planet Fitness to wash my face. Then I needed to go to FedEx Kinko's to do a little bit of business. Oh, I've also walked Chloe twice. And now we're going to a dog park. All before 10 a.m. She's got to sniff around. There's no dogs here to play with. How is it that the further north I go in Idaho, the hotter it gets? I was in these wonderful temperate climates and I came further north and it's really hot. I have not showered in a week, mainly because I've been out in the woods. And although there was a shower where I was out in the woods, it was like 27 degrees. So I didn't want to shower in those conditions. Anyhow, there's a Planet Fitness here. And tonight, once it's cool enough to leave Chloe in the car and when she's all energized out after playing at the dog park and going for long walks, she can stay in the car and I'm going to take a nice, long, hot shower. She sees him. She sees him. 
Okay, we're gonna go the other way. Hi. You like it? Extraordinarily frustrated. I tried to find a residential street to do my voiceovers. But people are everywhere. There's like humans outside in their own driveway talking. I had to leave my campground that I paid for because there were so many people. Oh, I'm really turning into a hermit. I needed to be in a large town to get something situated for work. grumpy and I'm still having a good time but if I'm really honest this trip this trip is an interesting one editing side note from my hotel room after five weeks on the road I got a hotel room I wish it was available for two nights but it's not anyhow even though I was kind of complaining about how busy the campground was I ended up becoming friends with my campground neighbors and they were so awesome that's why I'm a hermit who is social. I need my people and I need my solitude. It's both. Chloe is in REM sleep right now. I think she's dreaming about squirrels and birds and chasing them. All throughout Idaho, there are lakes like this. Everywhere you go, all over. If you blink, don't worry, you won't miss it. There will be another lake just a few miles down the road. I was trying to get Chloe to take a selfie with me for a thumbnail pic. She wasn't feeling it. There were too many squirrels. I must say, one of the best and trickiest parts of full-time nomad travel is that you meet wonderful people and dogs. Chloe made fast friends with Noodles, another healer mix in Coeur d'Alene. I made fast friends with her mama Deb. I say this is a tricky part of full-time travel because when I meet amazing people, I want to build community. And I miss community when I'm on the road. I already miss my Flagstaff friends and I don't want to say goodbye to all my new friends I meet along the way. However, this is also one of the best parts of nomad life because it is fantastic to have friends all over the country. Deb and Noodles, I hope we meet again one day. And so does Chloe. I'm getting roasted out of my car. It is really hot. It is a beautiful but too hot day in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. So I'm looking to get out of here and I still haven't decided where I'm gonna go. I wanna go north because I wanna see Sand Point and Priest Lake and then some areas in the far northeastern part of Washington. I need a shower, but it's too hot to leave Chloe in the car. So I'm like, do I basically not have a shower for three or four days? My hair is not that dirty. Showered a couple days ago. And I want to make it to the coast by next weekend because I need to be in cool weather for the work that I do over the weekends. And I need to connect to Elon Musk. Hey, Elon. You want to create a teeny tiny car camper together? I have the experience of what's needed so I can sort of guide that process and I can guide the interior design, but then you could do all of the really cool things like make it have an air conditioning and like unlimited power with your artificial intelligence. I know this is a long clip, but she is so darn cute. We are escaping the heat. We are currently in very hot Washington state. I had no idea it was so hot up here. I mean, it's summer, it's summer now. But in my defense, I went north to escape the heat and on summer solstice, the first day of summer, it was snowing where I was. I was in my heavy jacket with my little ear covers. Now I'm going way off route to escape the heat. I say off route, cause really, you just go where you need to go. But 
It is hot. Curious if Chloe's gonna wanna run around. She's just sort of mosey and sniffing stuff. Hoping she gets a few good sprints in because I'd like to drive a good five hours to somewhere that will escape the heat. We got a tornado or something? Tornado without any clouds? I mean, that could be a dust devil. That's one heck of a dust devil. That's a big one. It doesn't seem like it's windy though. Like I'm not getting blown off the road. What is that thing? And then we made it to Mazama, Washington, at the eastern base of the North Cascades. It was gorgeous, green, and unfortunately too hot. But we spent about 16 hours here to rest, walk, and sleep. Back in dispersed camp again, with my girl helping me find a spot. Chloe found the perfect spot. You go, girl. The next morning was beautiful and fragrant, with the aroma of wildflowers after a fresh rain. Even so, Chloe and I got roasted out of the car again. Chloe and I went for a brief walk while talking to a friend. But it was so hot, I realized it wasn't healthy for me or Chloe. So, we continued to the heart of the Cascades where it rained a warm, gentle rain. I planned to hike, but it was raining and we were both tired. Heat will do that. So, we just enjoyed the drive. Chloe was so tired, she was falling asleep while sitting up. Oh my god, I think she's so freaking cute when she chews. What is it that's so cute about a dog chewing? The day ended on the cooler side of the Cascades, as Chloe found more friends to play tug-of-war with. This is her new friend, Molly. Chloe is a social dog. She is not a hermit like her mother. And she is my friendship-making wing gal. At this park, I met such a cool woman who has lived all over the United States. She selected this Washington region because it's the Goldilocks of all things nature. It has the mountains and islands and bays and oceans and four seasons and it's not too hot and it's not too cold. It's got small towns, it's got large towns, it has farmlands and it has high rises. This greater Seattle area, all the way near the Canadian border, it just might be the perfect harmony of all things nature. This might be the perfect place to call home. Coming at you exhausted from the beautiful Pacific Northwest, Chloe and I have been spending time on an incredible island. And then there's lakes all over the island and the best dog park that I have ever seen. But I am exhausted. I don't usually stay in one place for approximately nine days. And Chloe and I have been in the general area about nine days. And that means I've been stealth camping for approximately nine days. The reason for that is that my dear sweet Chloe has had a pretty serious medical issue arise. So we have gone to the urgent care vet clinic and we've gotten some treatment and we're gonna go back for a follow-up in a couple of days and then 
what is the result of the follow-up is going to determine what our next steps are. So I have more days of stealth camping ahead of me. The reason we're in a hotel tonight is that my sweet little dear Chloe had a pretty serious medical situation which required us to stay in a metro and I became utterly exhausted from approximately 10 or 11 nights of stealth camping in a row. Stealth camping wears me out, but we needed to stay here so she could get the treatment that she needs. And although my sweet little girl is okay, she is gonna need a surgery within the next two months. That also really directs the course of our travel because I want her to have her surgery and her recovery in our home state, at our home base. So we're gonna go back down, mosey back down to Arizona. We were taking this whole experience one day at a time ever since my power blew. And what today illuminated was a path forward for at least the next several weeks. Until next time. Thanks for watching. Be sure to tune in next week where I share more about what's going on with Chloe. Also, we'll cross the Puget Sound in ferries, Chloe makes more besties all across the lands, and we explore more beautiful places en route back home to Arizona. If you haven't already, like, comment, turn on that notification bell, and subscribe.